Jacob called the Lord in Genesis 49. He called him the stone of Israel. How many know Jesus is the rock with your name on it? Come on! Aren't you glad that Jesus is the rock with your name on it? Come on! I said, come on! Hallelujah. That's a pretty powerful story. Amen. Worship team, thank you. I have seen a glimpse this morning of what God is going to do. I have seen a glimpse of what Cindy and I have fought for our whole life. I'm telling you, the presence of the Lord has been in this house. And, uh, you know, my preaching, my preaching is just whatever, but I'm telling you, I could go home right now and be satisfied. Grab your Bibles, 1 Corinthians chapter 2. I want to minister to you on the subject this morning of spiritual survival gear. And I'll tell you something, this warfare or this, this wardrobe that God gives us in Ephesians chapter 5, the breastplate of righteousness, the helmet of salvation, the sword of the Spirit, they're not given for nothing. God didn't dress you in a suit. He didn't dress you in pajamas, Right? He didn't pray. He dressed you knowing what you were going into. He dresses you as a warrior. He dresses you with the clothes that a, a warrior wears that's not for show. It's not for a parade. It's because you're, you're going to face warfare. This is not a game. This is not a game. I'm going to tell you some people are slipping into eternity every day that don't know Christ. This is not a game. And I want to give you a message this morning that I preached 27 years ago. But I couldn't remember it. But every time I would go over this verse, I remembered the anointing of that service, but I could not remember the information of that service. And I've been praying every time that I would pass over 1 Corinthians chapter 2, and I would be praying, God, bring that back to me. I just felt like prompted of the Holy Spirit to ask the Holy Spirit to bring this truth back to my mind and he did. And then Jeremiah's message Wednesday night so added to and confirmed what God was already saying to me. So 1 Corinthians chapter 2, and I want to read verse 13. That is not the verse I want to read. Yes, that is the verse I want to read. It says, which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teaches, this is what I want to teach on. But which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. The battle, the misery of most Christians is that you are trying to live a spiritual life out of your soul. Before you get saved, we live out of our soul. Lauren Larson reduces the difference between soul and spirit to two things. The soul feels, the spirit knows. Jeremiah said something Wednesday night and it rung my cage. He said, quit worrying about how you feel. And I'm telling you something, if you, don't, if you live in your feelings, you are a spirit person. But if you live out of your soul, you will be confused, aggravated, and disappointed. Because this is not a soulish life. This is a spiritual life. And you're going to be brought to the point. We, listen, many of you have problems. And the reason that you, they won't go away is because you don't see them as a spiritual problem. You see them as a natural problem. And you're dealing with them as a natural problem. And God is trying to get you to contemplate whether or not your children being sick or your marriage being attacked, or your mind not being right, or your financial life is a mess, he's trying to get you to contemplate whether this is not a natural thing, this is a spiritual thing. He's trying to transfer you from dealing with a spirit. How many know that the devil doesn't come up to you and go, hey, stupid, ding, this is me. This is me. No, he'll hide. He'll hide as a natural problem. And you as a Christian, with all of these power and all this promise, you're living out of your soul, you're not making use of any of it, 
because you are trying to deal with spiritual things out of your soul. And I want to tell you, Jeremiah, I want to say this again. I'm telling you, my, my son-in-law uh, has talked to me about these things since the moment he married my daughter. And I'm telling you, my, my son, you had an anointing on you Wednesday night. I mean an anointing. And I don't know about anybody else, but I was a student Wednesday night. I sat at the feet of Jeremiah as he taught the Word of God. And I'm telling you, when you, I couldn't get that, I couldn't get some of the things he said out of my mind. I mean, it rang over and over and over in my spirit. And I just want to say, I thank the Lord for you, Maya. And I thank the Lord that you refuse to be anybody else but you. Hallelujah. Father, we have felt your presence. Don't let me ruin it. Do not let me ruin what you've already done. Lord, I, I just don't want to ruin what you've done here this morning. So help me just to not ruin it. In Jesus' name, amen. Let me just say, yeah, that's a weird prayer, isn't it? That, that, let me just say, I want to talk to you about the process of seeing things go from a natural problem to a spiritual problem. Let me tell you, we're all human, and when we get saved, it's like learning everything all over again. Lauren Larson had his right hand cut off in an industrial accident. He actually went to Nashville to be a country western music star, and he got his right hand cut off that he played his guitar with. He wrote with his right hand. He had to relearn everything with his left hand. Had to relearn, went to occupational therapy, and had to relearn to live life left-handed than right-handed. Interesting thing about this is they tell you if you want to challenge your brain, if you're right-handed, start trying to do things with your left hand. That's not a spiritual answer, by the way. That's a carnal answer. So <laughs> discard that, right? Not for it. But anyway, I want to talk about some things. Number one, David in 2 Samuel 21, there is a famine that grips the land. And, and, and at the first year, David's saying, well, you know, this could be, this could be just a, a dry year. Year number two sets in. And another year where there's no rain. And then a third year sets in. And another year with no rain. And David begins to pray. And David all of a sudden realizes that he's not dealing with a natural problem. He's dealing with a spiritual problem. But I want to tell you something. Suffering primarily in the people around you. If you're in this place and you've got a problem in your life, in your family, and the suffering is not challenging you to begin to say, is this a spiritual thing? God's trying, God may be trying to make you understand that the thing you've been deal, trying to deal with in the natural is not natural. Listen, I'm not, into, I'm not into looking for a demon behind every bush, but I'll tell you there's a whole lot more demons hiding behind bushes today than there were 10 years ago. We're dealing with demon spirits. Your child being confused about their sexuality or their gender, that's demonic. That's demons. That, that, that's nothing but demonic. We are dealing with so many demonic things. I'm telling you, as a pastor, I am beginning to understand this more and more and trying to step out of deal, even diseases. Your child may or may not have a sickness or you may or may not have a sickness that is not natural. If you're always sick, it may not be your diet. It may not be your genes. It may be that you're, attack, you're being attacked by a devil. You're being attacked by a demon that always keeps you sick. If you're having mental problems, listen, I, I, I talked to a young lady and she said, I think I need to have an MRI. I said, you don't need an MRI. I said, you just need Jesus. This isn't a physical problem. This is a spiritual one. And the tears just began to roll down her face. Because I'm going to tell you, how many know the devil will tell you you're sick and dying? The devil will tell you you're just mixed up more than the next person. The devil will tell you you're just a, you're a unique case of screwed up. It's a lie. You just have been trying to deal with it out of your soul, and it's a spiritual problem. This is the reason we don't see miracles 
And the reason we don't see what the way they saw in the Bible is we are spirit people living out of our soul. We're all messed up, all confused. All, our hands are tied, our tongue is tied, our mind is all tied up because we won't operate in the spirit. Listen, I want to tell you something. There's a lot of new people in this church. But if you're here thinking that it's going to be weird when you hear people speak in tongues, I'm telling you, I love you, but we ain't changing. And I, listen, I, I'm not saying it to, to sound, I, I'm just saying, I have been through that. We ain't changing. And we're not changing because we don't want to change. We're not changing because it's the Bible, right? Because we're dealing with spiritual problems. More and more and more, people are going to leave churches and they're no longer going to care what the name over the door is as long as the Spirit's there. Because life is hard and more desperate than it's ever been. Amen? Number two. The demon-possessed son, that his father brings him to Jesus, and Jesus asks this thing, how long has he been this way? You know what Jesus is saying? What took you so long? What took you so long, Dad? I'll tell you what I think. It dawned on that father. I'm not dealing with a natural problem. I'm dealing with a spirit problem. I believe when, by the time that father came to Jesus, he was saying, this isn't epilepsy. This isn't my son trying to get attention. There's a demon trying to kill my son. You see, spiritual problems can only have spiritual answers, but you've got to see it as a spiritual problem to start seeking spiritual answers. If you're always dealing with the natural and you're never dealing, I don't care what your MRI says, I don't care what your heart graph says, Whatever, so I don't care. Your body responds to what's happening in your spirit. And you can go to a doctor for the medicate yourself, get 18 medications to be on. And I'm not saying not to. But if you've got a spiritual problem, none of that's going to help. The only thing that's going to help you is to get right with God. I'm telling you, there are testimony after testimony after testimony of people that have went to doctor after doctor after doctor after doctor after doctor. After doctor Counselor after counselor, as somebody asked me the other day, do you do therapy? I said, no, I don't do therapy. I do biblical counseling. And when I do biblical counseling, the, the, the counselor who is the Holy Ghost will help you. Whether you want to hear that or not, that's between you and you. But, but the, that's the truth. Number three, family problems. So number two, time. It takes time for somebody to start to see a natural problem as a spiritual problem. Number three. The Bible says family problems. Genesis 35, 2. I'm going to come back to this. This is powerful. The Bible says, you know the story. Dinah gets raped. Dinah, Jacob's daughter, gets raped. I'm going to tell you something. The, we, we are dealing with violent sexual bondage in this culture. Massive family problems. Children out of control. Parents out of control. But the problem that I grieves my heart the worst is is Christian parents that do not, they're never stirred to get on their face. By the way, we have a prayer meeting every Tuesday night, 6.30. And, and Kim Vassar came up to me, she, she runs it. She came up to me uh, Tuesday night after prayer and she said, Pastor, we cannot have this prayer meeting grow and do it the way we're doing it. She said, because we spend too much time taking prayer requests and not enough time praying. And she had an idea. She said, I want to put pads of paper out on a table, people can come in, fill out their prayer request, put it in the prayer box. We'll pray over the prayer box at the end of the thing. And I'm telling you, that bore, that bore witness with my spirit because God wants to grow our prayer meeting. I'll tell you something. I don't know. I, I, if, if I were some of you, I would, and I'm not saying you can't stay home and pray. Don't misunderstand me. But if I were some of you, I would have started getting on my faith, fasting and praying a long time ago. Because I personally believe I would rather err on the side of it being a spiritual problem and it not be. But the Bible says that, that Dinah is raped and then after that they tell the men of Shechem, they said, if you will circumcise yourselves, then we will let your son Shechem marry our daughter Dinah. And it was all a trick. And so Simeon and Levi go in to all these men that had circumcised themselves while they were still sore and they kill them all. And the Bible says, Jacob says, you have made me to stink in the land. And God whispers to Jacob and he said, go back to Bethel. Go back to the altar. 
They're going to the altar and Jacob turns around because Jacob's a praying man. And Jacob says, listen, I no longer believe this is a natural thing. It was not natural that my daughter got a whim to go out and see the men of the land. It is a demonic spirit that gave my daughter that idea. And my daughter has been raped by a heathen. And if God doesn't get a hold of her, it will change the direction of this family and it will change her life. And God whispers to him because God will always give direction to a man or a woman that has made the decision to start dealing with things in the spirit. And the Bible says this. The Bible says that he turns around to his sons and he said, I know the problem. You get the strange gods. Leave the strange gods among you. These were pocket gods. Jacob couldn't see them. They were little idols. We think of idols as big idols, visible to everybody. There were pocket idols. His sons, Judah, all of them had little pocket idols. Scotty, you pay attention to me. You understand me? I'm not going to tell you again. This is truth you need to hear. You're in for a battle in your life, young man. Because ever, I'm not saying you, I'm saying everybody is. But I want you to listen to me, okay? I'm telling you, this is serious stuff. Serious stuff. I don't care whether you're 10 or you're 100 sitting in here. This is something we all need to hear. All, every one of us. So if you're on your cell phone, throw that thing in the trash. Because listen to the Word of God this morning. You need, some of you, you're headed for the worst places in your life if you don't start making some changes. You cannot live the way you're living and thinking that it's just going to, it's never going to catch up. So listen to me. Jacob, as the father, turns around. He said, I know where this came from. You've been carrying strange gods. You've had hidden things in your life. And those hidden things have created what is happening in our family. Sometimes it takes suffering. Sometimes it takes a tragedy. To wake up a home, to wake up a mom and dad, to wake up a pastor, to wake up a leader, to wake up a nation. You know, it's, you, you know how you know the spiritual blindness of America? Not because the world out there, the ungodly person, never changes because kids are being killed. It's the church that is immune. It's the church that never drops on their face and says, dear God. What has happened? I'm telling you what's happened in America in my lifetime. What's happened to America in the last 10 years. And I'm not going to let this go. I pray every preacher in this house. I pray every one of you have the same aghast feeling in your gut. I, I, I pray that you have the same repulsiveness in your spirit to never make peace. To never make peace and with what's happening in our culture. That it doesn't shock the spirit man that you are. The spirit woman. Amen. Come on. And I'll tell you something. What's happening in Asbury and it's spread to Yale University and it's spread to Harvard University. I'm telling you something. It's all of God. They can't stop it because there's not a preacher involved. It's been just students. Just been God ministering to students. Listen. I want to talk to you what happened. Uh, Paul in storms. I'm going to come back to this. But Paul in a storm. In Acts chapter 27, a storm that if you look at the, the, the length of it, lasted for almost a year. And Paul, Paul finally goes down into the boat. Let me. This is Paul, the apostle. He finally goes down into the belly of the ship. And God says, this is no natural storm, Paul. This is a storm leveled at you. And he says, the boat is going down, but there will not be one man lost in this. I want to tell you something. Some of you, what you need to have is you need a word. The only thing stronger than a storm is a word about the reason why that storm is on your life. And I'm telling you, once you have a word, the storm has lost its power. You're no longer afraid. Something has gotten into your spirit. I'm telling you, this is the Bible. And I'm, what you need to do, if you're in a storm, quit putting up with it and get a word from God. Hallelujah. Listen. I want to talk about what happens without seeking God. 
The Bible says in 2 Chronicles 16 that King Asa got diseased feet and never sought God about. You know what that means? It means the disease in his feet was God. It was God. It wasn't a natural thing. It was a God thing. And if he would have sought God, God would have healed him. God would have shown him. But when he died, the Bible says he died because he never said, is this a spiritual thing? Is this, is this, is this disease a spiritual thing? Is this thing going on in my life? Is it a spiritual thing? Is God trying to get a hold of me? Man, I'm telling you, it's so powerful. Listen, if you don't seek God, you'll run around the church with an offense. Asa, Psalm 73, he sought God. He sought God, finally got an answer. But, he, but in, the, in the struggle, this is what he says. He says, if I don't find an answer to this, I will. Asa, by the way, was in charge of a 26,000 voice choir for King David. Let me tell you something. Leaders are attacked. And if a leader gets offended, and primarily if they're offended with God, man, they can wreak havoc. There's so many people in the church that are offended with God because they didn't pray enough to find out and get an explanation. And that can take you to hell. That can, that can damage. The, the worst thing about offended leaders or offended parents with God is they offend their children that never have a chance to know Him. Man, that's just serious stuff. Listen, I, want to, I don't know what's happened in your life. I know what's happened in mine. But I'm telling you, I've sought the Lord. I've asked the Lord, you give me, show me whether this is natural or spiritual, and give me an explanation. And the Bible says, Asaph said, if I would have opened my mouth, I would have offended the children of men. Man, I'm telling you something. If you're offended with God, keep it to yourself. You pray it out, but keep it to yourself. Listen to this. Nathaniel. They find, Jesus finds Nathaniel. Actually, who is it that finds? Which, which disciple finds Nathaniel? Philip? Andrew, you don't know? Jesus finds Nathaniel. Nathaniel says, are they, I'm sorry, whatever disciple says, yeah, we found a guy from Nazareth. And Nathaniel says, can any good thing come out of Nazareth? This man has believed that there was somebody else was the Messiah, somebody else was the voice, somebody else was the man of God. Over and over and over, now, now he's, he's offended. And Jesus says, Come and see. I want to tell you something. You can be offended. You can be offended with God, His church, His leaders. You can do that. But I'm telling you, it's going to take you on a long, dark path that's going to ruin your life. Or you can say, come and see. You got to get back up. If you, listen, if you think that I haven't been offended, oh, dude. I want to talk about the difference in people. Well, actually, I'm not done with that point. Without seeking God, Isaac. I thought of this when Jeremiah said this. This is Isaac. He calls Jacob. He's so lost in self. He's so lost in himself. Have you ever got lost in yourself? When you're lost in yourself, the only thing you think about is, gee, I wonder if that blister is actually cancer. Uh, you know, I mean, just the little things... The, I love what Jeremiah said Wednesday night when he said, if you have a prophetic gift and you don't use it, you'll become a gossip. Because you'll use this divine gift that is, you'll see, you're, you're, you're given a gift to see people, but if you're not using it right, you'll see people all right, but you'll see all the negatives. You can misuse a gift. But I'll tell you, this is, uh, Isaac is so lost in himself that he thinks he's going to die. He's the man of God. He's the man of God that's so lost in himself. Now he's a hypochondriac. And the Bible says he thinks he's going to die and he lived for 50 more years. How many people can get lost so lost in self you're contemplating your death every single day? I know it's going to be today. He's lost in self. He gives away the birthright and the blessing 50 years too soon. If you're not careful, you'll give away the call. You're so lost in yourself, you'll give it away. I'm never going to get out. I'm never going to change. Woe is me. Uh, you know, uh, what, what is that old, that old song that used to be on? Hee haw. Woe is, how did that go? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Agony on me. 
Yeah, that's right. Excessive misery. Yeah, if I didn't have bad luck, I'd have no luck at all. Gloom, despair, agony on me. Yeah. We should make a worship song out of that. You know, some people do. <laughs> Gloom, despair, and agony on me. I want to talk about, listen, I want to talk about the differences in people. I love what I'm about to preach. I love the certain personalities of God's Word. And I was thinking about this in the, the, the ten virgins of Matthew chapter 25. The Bible says five were wise and five were foolish. Five were ready for the dark and five weren't. Five had extra oil and said, I am going to light this lamp and I'm going to pierce the darkness until I find out why this is going on. This da- I brought extra oil. I planned for a long battle. I planned for the devil to be dark. I planned for the devil to be bad. I planned for life to be hard. But I brought extra oil. I'm ready. Those other five virgins went and said, can I have some? Nope. Listen, I'm going to tell you something. You're either going to go to people or you're going to go to God. And you got some dark places. You got some things you don't know. You got some mysteries. Come on. You have some mysteries that's happened in your life. I want to ask you, you got some extra oil? You better get some extra oil. I don't know about you, but I'm getting a, I'm getting a, waste, I'm getting a waste pack of oil. I'm going to find out. I'm going to outlast, by the help of the Holy Ghost, I'm going to outlast the mystery. I'm going to outlast the devil. I'm going to outlast the lie. I'm going to outlast the adversity. I'm going to outlast whatever the devil's got. It feels sometimes like we have fought every demon in eight counties. But I got a picture this morning. I got a glimpse. I got a glimpse of where we're going. And I, I told you this, I, I've told you this for years, that God told me if I'd be obedient, this sanctuary would never be big enough. I told you that. I'm telling you, we're there. We're starting to see that. We're starting to see the fulfillment. I'm telling you, that lady, if I hadn't, if I hadn't married a, vir- a chaste virgin, got some extra oil, man, I tell you, we've had to have some extra oil. But I, I, I listen. I want to develop. I, I want to develop people in this house to say you got some extra oil. Yeah, I got extra oil. I'm not planning for this to be easy. I'm not planning for a short night. I'm not planning for daylight savings time. I'm planning it's going to be a battle. It might be rough. There's going to be some dark days. But I brought extra oil. Hallelujah. Listen. This is what Jeremiah said Wednesday night. Maya said, you can't, you can't know the voice of God and be in touch with the Spirit and not be a person of rest. Jesus is headed across the lake to Gadara on His way to one of the greatest moves of God. Of his, in fact, I think it's the greatest move of God of His entire ministry. The demoniac of Gadara won more souls than anybody else in Jesus' ministry until after Pentecost. Ten cities were affected by the conversion of the demoniac of Gadara. Think of that. You're talking about one man that affected an entire province called Decapolis. You think of this. And Jesus is headed to this monumental meeting where when Jesus said, we're going to the other side. Listen, when Jesus tells you you're going to the other side, you're going to the other side. The Bible says a storm blows up. But this storm, and Jesus is sleeping. And the Bible says they finally awaken Him. And when Jesus awakes, how many are slow to wake up? Somebody, you know, I mean, if you're in a deep sleep, slow to wake up. It's just like, you know. Not Jesus. They go and wake Jesus up, and he's in, he's in fight mode. Boom. The Bible says he goes to the front of the ship and points at the storm and said, rebukes the storm. Why? Because he knew that storm was spiritual. 
The disciples thought it was a natural storm. The reason they couldn't speak to it is they didn't see it as a spiritual storm. They saw it as a natural storm. And the Bible says that, that uh, I was reading this and I thought, Jesus, how, Lord, how does, how does you resting on a pillow and rebuking a storm go together? And God answered it through Maya Wednesday night. Because if your mind is all confused and your mind is all busy with natural stuff, you don't have time to discern, to pray. Listen, some of you, you're too busy. You're too busy. And if you want to know what's going on in your life, you've got to slow down. And you've got to, you've got to rest and get quiet before the Lord. Do you know, it was a still, small voice that spoke to Elijah. And if Elijah hadn't got quiet and heard that still, small voice, he would have been hiding in a cave. And I'm telling you, some, some of you are going to hide the rest of your life if you don't get a hold of what's attacking you. If you don't get a hold of the spiritual truth behind it. Listen, the Bible says in, in 1 Kings chapter 5, King Solomon. King Solomon goes before the Lord as, he's, as God is making him king. And the Lord comes to him and says, Solomon, what do you want? And he said, I need discernment. I'm going to lead your people and I need discernment, Lord. I don't want wealth. I don't want riches. I don't want to be known. I just want to, I need discernment. Malachi says that there's coming a day that God would move on his people to discern the good from the evil. So if you need discernment, how many know the good and the evil can't be naturally discerned? The worst evil there is is evil that doesn't look evil. You need discernment. You need spiritual discernment. And, and he cries, and listen, the first test of his discernment. He doesn't know. He doesn't listen. He doesn't know that this is going to be recorded for time and eternity. He doesn't know that there's a recorder in the court thinking, oh man, I got, I got to get this. I got to get this because generations are going to want to know this. And two prostitutes walk in. And one of, both of them had had a baby. And, and one of them had rolled over in her sleep. Actually, the scripture implies that she rolled over and suffocated her baby while she was in the act with another person. And her baby died. And in the middle of the night, she slinks across the room and grabs the living baby from the other prostitute. And the other prostitute wakes up with this dead baby and says, that's not my baby. How many women say you know if it's your baby, right? What I love about this story is how does a prostitute end up in the king's court? I'll tell you how. You get a prostitute who said, hey, somebody stole my baby. Somebody stole my baby. Somebody stole my baby. She goes to the sheriff of the town. Somebody stole my baby. Sheriff, whatever. Come back the 18th time. I said, somebody stole my baby. Sheriff goes to the governor. She goes to the governor. Somebody stole my baby. This governor, whatever, you're a prostitute. She, somebody stole my baby. Listen, what, what am I saying? I'm saying, quit feeling sorry for yourself. You can get answers when you want answers. And the Bible says that she got all the way to the king's court. One of, one of Solomon's men came in and said, two prostitutes want to talk to you. So, really? Two prostitutes? Yeah, yeah, I, I'm telling you, you've never talked to a prostitute like this one. Somebody stole, what happened? Somebody stole her baby. Believe me, you're going to hear all about it. Come in, stands in front of Solomon. They're arguing over whose child it is. And I'm telling you, the miraculous discernment of God comes over Solomon and says, split the baby in two. Give half to each mother. And the real mother says, dear, don't do that. And he said, you're the mother. You see, I'm telling you something. At the, at the, at the end of the day, your discernment, you're getting quiet before God. You're, you're begging, you're pleading. Listen, I've said this for the third Sunday in a row. The Bible says, in the last days, a godly man will be more valuable than a wedge of gold. You know who will say that about you? The world. Somebody that really has their, their, uh, their discernment. Listen to this. I want to talk about the result. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14, this is what it says. It says, the, uh, the unspiritual man does not take hold of the things of the Spirit. Listen, the man or woman that's walking in discernment will take hold of it. They will take hold of it and they will change their world. 
You will pray until you get a word. And don't tell me you won't know when you get a word. God knows how to talk to you. And you will get a word and then you will take hold of it and you will walk in it. You will walk in what God is saying to you. Number two, listen to this. I think this is good. In Gen- I'm going to finish with this. In Genesis chapter 35, when they get to Bethel, I've told you this story. When they get to Bethel, the Bible says that God responds to Isaac in front of all of his children. This is what he said. This is the second time. He said, you will be called, no longer be called Jacob, you will be called Israel. This is actually the third time now that the Lord has said this to him. But this word for called is different. It means that people will chase you down and tackle you and call you Israel. It means this. It means when you walk in discernment, when you are the one that finally got before God and said, I have a word. I have a word. This is not a natural problem. This is a spiritual problem. And God has talked to me. And when they find out that that word is from God, I'm going to tell you something. People will run you down and tackle you and call you a man or woman of God. The problem is in our culture is that too many people don't want to be responsible for somebody else. They do not want to go before God and say, I need a word. Are you here this morning and you have something in your life, and it has masked itself as a natural problem, but it's a spiritual one. And you have put up with it, and you have been defeated, and, and you, your, your faith is drained. Why? Because you're trying to deal with a natural problem in, in, in a natural way, or a, a spiritual problem in a natural way. Are you ready? Are you ready this morning? Worship team, can I get you to come? There needs to be a change in your life. Let me, while they come, let me give you one more thing. Luke chapter 15, verse 8 and 9. It says that the Bible says a woman lost a coin. These silver coins was actually a necklace that, she, that those women would wear. They were like a uh, mother's ring. And they would have silver coins for special events in their life, and she lost one. The Bible says she lost it in her house. And the Bible says that she found it by by cleaning her house. She swept her house clean, went and got a lamp and swept her house clean. I want to tell you something. It It was a spiritual loss, not a natural one. It was a spiritual one. And God allowed it to happen so that she would clean her house. Some of you, you got some problems. And God's allowed it to clean your house. If you start cleaning your house, if you start saying, God... I want you to deal with my house. You're going to find what you lost. And the Bible says that she would call in when she found it. She would call in everybody and they would rejoice. This is what I think. She'd call in everybody and say, you know what? I found it. And I found it because God showed me some stuff. And she, I don't believe she was ever the same. I believe from that moment on, she said, man, nothing in this life is natural. I'm not living a natural life as a believer anymore. I'm living a spiritual life. Let me just say something to you, man. you got the best days ahead of you if you transition. Stop trying to live this life in your soul and start living it out of your spirit. Stand with me this morning. I'm going to say some things and they're strong. But there's some people in this church, there's some people seated, seated here this morning that you snicker at the Word of God. I'm not talking about outwardly. But you won't submit to what the Bible says. You won't submit to what the Bible says about not being unequally yoked. And then you wonder why. That relationship after relationship after relationship, you walk away from devastated. There's some of you, 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 don't, you, you snicker at people that have made the decision to live holy. Made the decision to trust God's Word. I had a man in this church, actually two men, and I preached on holiness one Sunday, and I, ta- I said this, I said, if you, if you want to be a man of God, you will not sleep with women until you're married. Those two men walked out. One of them said, did you hear what Pastor Randy said? He said, yeah, that's stupid. Nobody's going to tell me who I'm going to sleep with or not. The other one made a decision to surrender his life. That man that said, nobody's going to tell me, shot somebody in the back of the head. A girlfriend shot her in the back of the head. 
I'm going to tell you something. There's consequences. When are you going to get tired wondering, oh, church, church doesn't work for me. It doesn't work until you make a decision that I'm going to trust the book. I'm going to live a spiritual life with with some spiritual answers. I'm going to look at a spiritual guide. I'm going to stop trying to decide how I'm going to live as a Christian. This has decided it for you. And if you live it, you'll be blessed. You'll be blessed. Because it blesses anybody. Listen, Jesus said, Jesus said, anybody that asks, asks, seeks, or knocks will find. Anybody. So I want to ask you this morning, I, I want to say this. Would you bow your heads with me this morning? And, and I, I want to, I want to, the, the Spirit of the Lord is loving this church. He's loving you by telling you to separate. He's loving by telling you, listen, you can't live out of your soul and bring spiritual blessings. You can't live your life anymore trying to deal with natural problem or spiritual problems in natural ways. You got to decide. And I want to make I want to make a call here for Christians. If you're here this morning, say, Pastor, I'm a believer. But I've been making my own decisions about what parts of the Bible I'm going to yield to. I'm going to trust. And for some of you, it's not rebellion, it's fear. You have fear in your soul. You have fear it's not going to work for you. You have fear that if if you finally make a decision to live right, you're never going to be married. Nobody's ever going to nobody's ever going to love you. That's a lie. It's a lie from the pit. It's just a lie. You got to decide this morning. If you're here this morning and you say, "Pastor, I'm done living that way." I'm done living that way. I'm I'm deciding today. Listen, let the decision carry your feet. I'm deciding today that I'm going to yield my life. I'm going to trust the Word of God. If that's you, I want you to come. In any area of your life, I want you to come. If you're a believer and that's you, come on. I know that God's speaking to people in this church. That's you. That's you. I don't care how young or how old you are. Young people, listen, I don't care. I don't. Maybe the, the youngest person in here is 10. But teenagers, hear me. If this is you. Come on, I know this about teenagers. We are so aware of what somebody else is is thinking or doing. But if this is you, I'm telling you, you save yourself a lot of problems by just saying, that's me. I'm making a decision to live faithful to the Word of God. I'm 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 gonna believe the Word of God. Anybody else, come on. Come on, if that's you. Come on, I'm gonna open this. Keep it open. Older believers, come on. It may not be rebellion, but there's something in you. Little kids, if you're in here, listen, if you're, if you're a, young, a, a, a young child, and do it now. Do it now. Come on, do it now. Do it now. Decide now. Hallelujah. Stretch your hands out to the Lord. Come on, stretch your hands out to the Lord. I want you to begin to surrender. Surrender living by your own thought life. Surrender living by your own ideas. Come on, you got to do it for you. Let it come out of your mouth. Come on, begin to do do business with Jesus. Do business with Jesus. Father, I surrender. I surrender my, my mind. I surrender my ideas. I surrender to you. I surrender what I don't understand. I'm going to yield. I'm going to bow my knee to the Word of God. I'm going to bow my head before you. I'm bowing my understanding. I am done living my way. I want the blessings of the Lord. There are people that are not up here yet. God's dealing with you. I'm going to open this up. God's dealing with you. Come, come on. God's dealing with your heart. Come on, you haven't come yet, but God's dealing with you. Young people, come on. God's dealing with your heart. I take authority right now. I take authority over lies. I take authority over lies. I take authority over the lie that I'm going to end up alone. I take authority over the lie that I'll be so weird, nobody will be my friend. I take authority over the lie that I'm going to lose something if I obey God. I take authority over every lie of the enemy that has kept you out of the righteousness of Christ, that has kept you out of the blessings of God. Hallelujah. 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 Lay your hand on somebody next to you. Would you do that? Lay your hand and pray for the person next to you real quick. 
com fé. Father, I pray, leaders, come up really fast. We're going to do this really fast. I want you to come up, run up here real fast, and just make a circle around these people. As many of you as I can find, come on, come up and just make a circle around them. We're going to pray for them. Hallelujah. Come on, as many of you as I can get up here, come on, just make us make a circle around them. Sister Anna, come on. Pastor John, come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I surrender. I That's the devil. Come on, that's 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 confirmation. Come on, that's proof something happening here. Come on, that's proof. I said that's proof. Come on, stretch your hands. Come on, that's proof. Stretch your hands all over this house. Come on. I said, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, I want you to say, I'm gonna be a spiritual person. Come on, say it to the Lord. I'm gonna be a spiritual person. I'm done living out of my soul. I'm done living by my feelings. No more. No more. No more. No more. I surrender to the gift of God on my life. I surrender to the gift of God on my life. I surrender to what God's called me to. I surrender to the gift. Come on, say that. Some of you, you're called. You've been running from the call. I surrender to the call of God on my life. Hallelujah. I would say unto you, I have brought you by this path. I have led you by my hand. I have led you to this place of surrender, says the Lord. But there is a new life waiting for you right now. I would say to you, that there are miracles in front of you. The Jordan will open as you walk with me. The Lord would say, I am going to endue you with power. The problems you face will not stand before me in you. I will give you words. I will give you direction. I will let you know on the right hand and on the left, says the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ah, oh, glory to God. I said glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's finish with that. Come on. You can leave anytime you want to. Come on.
Hallelujah. You're dismissed this morning. Lord bless you. Lord bless you.